In one ancient Greek kingdom, at a time when the gods still roamed among mortals, three beautiful princesses dreamed what their future husbands would look like. Mine will be very rich and will cover me with the finest silk and the most beautiful jewels. My husband will be a famous general and he will show me as his most remarkable achievement. And you, Psyche, what will your husband look like? All I want is a love that will lift my spirit. <laughs> so cheesy. The two sisters were beautiful, but Psyche was certainly the most beautiful. So beautiful that she attracted everyone's eyes, making her sisters jealous. People from faraway kingdoms traveled long distances just to gaze at the famous princess. Behold, the most beautiful creature who ever set foot on earth. Psyche was worshipped as a true deity, and the tributes previously paid to Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, were now addressed to the young and beautiful princess. The offended goddess, caught in anger, watched the parade that followed the princess, while her temple was empty. Aphrodite gathered her son, Eros, the god of love and passion. Dear son, this mortal who thinks she is on the same level as the gods must be punished. Through your arrows, make Psyche fall in love with the hideous creature. As night fell, Eros went to the royal palace and stealthily entered Psyche's room. Psyche was sleeping in her bed. Curiously, Eros approached the princess to see if she was really that beautiful. The god was overwhelmed as the beauty of Psyche was truly splendid. The fact that my mother is jealous of this mortal being is no coincidence. Her beauty can eclipse the most beautiful among the nymphs and goddess. In an unexpected turn of events, Psyche turned in her sleep, and this movement disoriented Eros, who accidentally wounded himself with his own weapon. The wounded god instantly fell in love with the young and beautiful mortal. And because of his love, Eros failed to accomplish the mission that would have caused harm to Psyche. Psyche carried on her life normally and did not even suspect what had happened. But there was something strange going on. Time passed and, although she was the most beautiful and most beloved, Psyche was still single, while her sisters had several suitors. Psyche, you have always been adored by everyone. But you are still single, while our sister and I are already happily married to the noblest of men. Don't worry, daughter of mine. Your beauty may be overwhelming to some men, but soon a suitor worthy of your heart will appear. But the king was indeed very much worried about his daughter's situation. The king was unaware that the lack of suitors was because Eros refused to awaken the love for Psyche in any man since he was in love with the girl. He went to the Oracle of Delphi in his quest for answers. Inside, through a Pythoness, the god Apollo pronounced himself. Your daughter will marry a perverse winged being who is delighted to wound mortals and gods. The princess shall be left on the edge of the abyss in matrimonial attire where she shall be delivered to this terrible creature who will cause her death. Apollo was referencing Eros, the god of love. The solar god harbored a great resentment for Eros, since he had made the god of music have non-requited loves. The king left the temple in tears, as he was resistant to the idea of losing his favorite daughter. But the envious sisters of Psyche insisted that he was to obey the orientations of the oracle. You must sacrifice Psyche, or you will draw the ire of the gods and woe to our kingdom! The king then revealed the sorrowful fate of his daughter. My beloved daughter, by the will of the gods we will deliver you to a terrible fate. Your beauty has become a curse. The princess was led into the abyss by a bridal procession, which resembled a funeral procession. Psyche, hearing her parents' lamentation, did not hold back. Why do they now bemoan my fate? A short while ago they rejoiced, proudly, to see me being adored like a goddess, while they knew the sacrilege that was being perpetuated. 
Now carry me up the cliff, and let me meet my dismal fate. Psyche was abandoned on the edge of the abyss, in expectation of her terrible husband. A breeze started to lift Psyche towards the sky. This wind was the god Zephyr, also known as the West Wind. The princess levitated in the sky towards her destiny. After being swept away by Zephyr, Psyche awoke in an idyllic place. Flowers spread everywhere and a delicious scent perspired the air. A beautiful palace featuring the whitest marble stood out in the landscape. Psyche climbed the stairs that led to the entrance of the palace, bewildered by all the wealth that surrounded her. The place was made of striking luxury, where there was no shortage of adornments covered in gold and silver. As she entered the palace, she heard a soft voice, but could not tell where it came from. My lady, everything you see now belongs to you, and we are at your disposal to assist you in anything you wish. There was no one around her, but the young woman understood that these were invisible servants. They helped her in the bath, at meals, and sang and played beautiful songs. Now you shall go to your room and wait for the arrival of our master. And what is your master like? They say he's a monster. Some have mentioned him that way, but in fact he's not evil, just volatile. Already in her room, Psyche, distressed, was waiting for her fate. The Cloak of Nyx, the goddess of the night, had already fully clothed the skies. The room was in utter darkness, and it was impossible to see any shape when Psyche felt that something had crept in through the window. The lady felt the presence of her new husband and could feel his breath on her neck. The young woman was tense and had no idea what would happen. Against her expectations, she had a night of sublime pleasure and her new husband treated her with much love and affection. When she awakened in the morning, her husband had already left, and due to the darkness of the previous night, she could not have any glimpse of her companion. Psyche spent the day getting to know the facilities of her new residence, but she kept thinking about when she would find that mysterious creature again. The night arrived, and Psyche was already waiting for her husband. The couple met, and loved each other on countless nights. On one of those, Psyche couldn't resist and asked, My love, why do you always hide in the shadows? I would so much like to know how you really are. Isn't the love we share enough? All I'm asking is that you don't try to see me. In the darkness, we are equals. I'm sorry if I annoyed you. That wasn't my intention. Psyche decided to respect her husband's request and stopped touching the subject. Time passed, and despite being very happy, Psyche missed her family. Husband of mine, I miss my family so much, and it hurts my heart to know that they think I am dead. I beg you to let me visit her. Eros accepted Psyche's request because, according to his thoughts, if she decided to return after having been released, that would be the ultimate proof of her genuine love. My beloved daughter, I thought I would never see you again. Psyche's relatives were surprised with the girl's return, whom they thought they would never see again. And the return was triumphant. Psyche was adorned with the most beautiful jewels. She looked like the richest of queens. How is your life with your mysterious husband? It couldn't be more wonderful. He is sweet and does everything to please me. Her jealous sisters did not believe the stories Psyche told while she distributed beautiful gifts to her relatives. Everything about our sister tends to be too much. I don't think everything she says is really that gorgeous. You don't have to believe me. Come with me and you can see for yourself. Zephyr, the wind from the west, led Psyche and her sisters to the heavenly palace. When they got there, they realized that everything their sister had said was true, but this only made her sisters more jealous. The envious sisters decided to poison Psyche's relationship. I know that everything seems wonderful, but don't you remember what the oracle said? You married a monster, 
and he will be responsible for your death. Do this. When you sense that he is sleeping, take a knife, turn on a light, and after seeing the monster, cut his throat! Her sisters departed, but seeds of distrust had been planted in Psyche's heart. The night came, and her husband was already asleep beside her. The young woman took a knife and lit a lamp. As she approached her bed, Psyche realized that this was not a monster, but a young man with divine beauty. The young woman moved closer to contemplate her husband's breathtaking beauty, and concluded that he could only be a god. But a drop of hot oil accidentally fell from the lamp, and it hit Eros's chest, who awoke frightened by the burn, and he faced Psyche, wielding the knife. How can you be such a fool? Is this how you repay my love? Thinking that I'm a monster and wanting to slash my throat? Forgive me, my love. I know I made a mistake, but we can make this right. I only asked you one thing, and you couldn't do it. And so you'll never see me again. Eros flew out the window. Psyche jumped after him but couldn't reach him and hit the ground. The fall injuries were light, but her heart was utterly broken. When they heard that Psyche had returned, her sisters ran to the cliff, hoping that they would be blown away by the west wind. Zephyr began to blow, and the sisters threw themselves into his arms. But he did not seize them, letting them fall from the cliff. The poor Psyche began to help with the tasks of the goddess Demeter's temple, but she never stopped thinking about her lost love. In Demeter's temple, Psyche accomplished all of her tasks with utmost dedication. But all this work was not enough to make the young woman stop thinking about her lost love. The goddess Demeter showed her pity for the poor girl and decided to help her. Poor Psyche, I feel sorry for your pain. So I give her the following advice. Go to Aphrodite's temple and offer yourself to the goddess with humility and submission. Then you will soften the goddess's wrath, and perhaps you will be able to win back her love. Who am I not to follow the advice of such a wise and benevolent goddess? Psyche went to the goddess of love's temple, and she had no idea how she would be welcomed by the former mother-in-law. The young woman was met with great distrust by Aphrodite. What is the most obnoxious and disloyal of creatures who have walked on this earth doing in my temple? I humbly throw myself down before the goddess of love and put myself at her service in search of forgiveness. Do you believe that you will be forgiven easily by me after robbing my honors and hurting my son? To purge your sins will be very painful and you will have to do the most difficult jobs, which may cost you your own life. I will do anything to at least have a small chance to get your forgiveness and win back my love. Aphrodite chose to burden Psyche with painful tasks. As a first assignment, Psyche would then have to go to the grain barn and separate the different varieties, which were thoroughly mixed. The difficulty of such a task would have overwhelmed even Hercules, the god Eros, who secretly observed everything, made ants help Psyche in her task. This way, the young woman accomplished her work in record time. Aphrodite was angered to see the work accomplished so quickly. I don't know how you managed to accomplish this task so easily, but the next one won't be so straightforward. Psyche was supposed to bring Aphrodite a good handful of golden wool from dangerous sheep. These were no ordinary animals, since, besides having the golden wool, they were also enthusiasts of human flesh. The sheep passed through a narrow trail between thorny plants, and part of their wool ended up sticking to the thorns. Psyche collected the wool that was left between the thorns and presented the golden threads to the goddess. Well done, but do not think it's over. The goddess of beauty then demanded that the young woman bring her a jug of water from the source of the Styx River, which is located on top of a mountain. The task was seemingly impossible to achieve, but Zeus ordered his eagle to collect the water from the source and deliver it to Psyche, 
And so one more job was accomplished. I admit that you have been able to accomplish these tasks by conquering the mercy of the gods, but your next job will have a price that only you can pay. The hassle you've caused me has exhausted my beauty, so I demand you go to the kingdom of Hades and ask Queen Persephone to fill this box with beauty so I can restore my splendor. And then you shall have my forgiveness and blessing to reunite with my son again. Psyche knew now that her end was near, and she knew of no other way to enter the underworld than to take her own life. The young woman was ready to jump from the top of a tower when she heard a voice like a ghost. There's another way. I'll tell you the route and how you can overcome the obstacles known as Charon the Ferryman and Cerberus, the three-headed dog. But when you come back, don't ever open the box in any situation. Following the guidance of the mysterious voice, she found a cave that would take her to the underworld. After a lengthy descent, she reached the banks of the Acheron River, and there she met Charon. I serve the goddess Aphrodite and have an audience with Queen Persephone, who awaits me. She gave two coins to the boatman Charon as payment. So she crossed the River of Souls toward the domains of Hades. Psyche introduced herself to the king and queen of the underworld, Hades and Persephone. What does a mortal do in our domains? I'm here at the service of Aphrodite, who asks you to fill this box with some of your beauty so that she can restore hers. Persephone gave the box back to her, which was now much heavier, and Psyche set out on her way out of the underworld. Psyche came across Cerberus preventing her passage. However, she had taken with her, guided by the mysterious voice, barley and honey bread, soaked with a sleeping pill. She offered it to the dog, who fell asleep, and so Psyche proceeded to the surface. As the boatman made his return trip, the young woman saw her own reflection in the waters, and she noticed how all this work had made her look tired. Psyche started the ascent to the surface, and she would soon finish her last mission. This box is nearly overflowing with beauty. It won't hurt me to take just a little bit for myself. And like this, when I find my love again, I will be beautiful and glowing for him. Psyche opened the box, and out of it came a black mist. As she absorbed the mist, Psyche started to faint, and life began to leave her body. Eros felt that something had happened to his love and went to rescue her. When he found Psyche, she was cold as a cadaver. Thanatos, the embodiment of death, was already beside the girl's body. Using his powers, Eros lifted the mortal mist from her beloved's body and put it back in the box. Psyche awoke in Eros' arms and said, My love, I feel now that I can finally look you in the eyes without risking losing you. Then the couple kissed passionately. Eros instructed Psyche to finish her work handing the box to Aphrodite. In the meantime, the god of love flew to Mount Olympus, where he begged Zeus to convince Aphrodite to allow the couple to bond. Eros led Psyche to Mount Olympus. All the gods were waiting for her there. And from the hands of Zeus himself, and with Aphrodite's blessing, she received the nectar and ambrosia, divine foods that bestowed immortality. Psyche. Her path was thorny, but ultimately you managed to complete your quest. Now you are immortal and free from the obstacles created by men's ignorance, and the bond that binds you and your husband will never be breached, and this love will persist for all eternity. From the union of Eros and Psyche was born Hedon, the deity of pleasure, and the love of the couple lasted forever.